Well, hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 99. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Can you believe we're 99 episodes in? (laughs) I cannot, and I'm going to have a very special episode on Thursday, so definitely check that out. But today, we're going to be focusing on something that we've talked a little bit about on the podcast before but haven't focused too much on, which is mental clutter. Now, most people, they start with the physical clutter. That was the case for me. Then kind of moving on to the calendar clutter with your obligations and activities and so forth. But then once we kind of clear that out of the way, then we have more of our thoughts, our shoulds, our limiting beliefs, our to-dos, all of those things that if you were like me and you wake up or two or three in the morning and you can't get back to sleep because of all these thoughts in your head. So today I am going to be talking to you about how to master mental clutter in four simple steps. So I know you're going to love this episode. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. One of my favorite things to do in the entire world is to read the kind reviews that you have all left in Apple Podcasts. And I wish that some of the other podcast players allowed you to do written reviews, but for those of you that have left them, I really, really appreciate it. And today's featured review is from Riri89. She is actually an Aussie. Shout out to my Australian listeners. (laughs) And she titles this easy to implement tips. I love how your podcast is realistic and down to earth. It has easy to implement tips and doesn't require a million steps or expensive solutions that are out of reach for most. I'm in Australia and find that the tips and strategies are relevant no matter on your location. Keep up the wonderful work. Well, thank you so much. And if you would like to leave a review for the show, it really helps other moms find the podcast and it means the world to me. So you can always go to Apple Podcasts, find my podcast, Moms Overcoming Overwhelm, and scroll down and they don't have a neon sign, unfortunately. It is just like these small little letters that say, write a review. So thank you so much in advance advance. And speaking of easy to implement tips, we are going to get into these four simple steps for mastering mental clutter. So first, let's go ahead and define what I define at least as mental clutter. I think it's a combination of several things, which could be negative thoughts, shoulds, limiting beliefs, and also to do's that kind of stay stuck in our brain. And also we normally would assign some sort of negative judgment or some sort of judgment to our thoughts that really isn't serving us. So that's what makes it clutter. Similar to how physical clutter is what doesn't serve us and calendar clutter is what doesn't serve us with our time. Mental clutter is what doesn't serve us as far as our mental and emotional health. And the thing about mental clutter and why most people have a hard time with it, including myself, is because it isn't visible to others. So my husband might come home and notice that the countertop in the kitchen is messy, but he may not be aware of the running to-do list in my head or the negative self-talk that I have. But when it manifests itself, I can be distracted. I can be getting down on myself a lot. 
and it also can impact my sleep. And I'm sure many of you mamas feel the same way. So I would love to get into these four steps today. And the first step has to do with our to do. So we're going to kind of separate out the to do's, which we can definitely ruminate on a lot. And then from separate that from the negative thoughts and the limiting beliefs and the should. So the first step is to stop the thought stream by finding a way to capture and organize your to do's and actions that you need to take. And I love the book by David Allen, getting things done. And this quote, there is no reason ever to have the same thought twice, unless you like having that thought. And research shows that 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. So how do we do something about that? Well, I talk about this a little bit in episode 40 too tired to tackle your to-do list, you're probably not doing these three things. And you definitely want to start with that brain dump phase where you're kind of writing down everything that you're thinking about, but you don't want to stop there. You want to be able to prioritize the list of things and then place them within context. So that's one of the reasons I love the Thriving in Motherhood Planner, which I have linked in the show notes today. So I know what I have to do at home, on the computer, what errands I have to run, what discussions I need to have with my husband and so forth. And after the brain dumping and prioritization, then you want to be able to block that time within your schedule, whether that be putting in a time block for errands or even putting in a time block to get through those to do's once a week or maybe every other day, depending on how much you have. So that first step should help us with most of the to-dos so that we're able to capture them and also process them. The second step is to learn how to detach judgment from our negative thoughts, our shoulds, and limiting beliefs. Now, supposedly we have 12,000 to 16,000 thoughts a day, 80% of which are negative. And we talked about this way back in episode 17 with my friend Julia Obenga from Rich and What Matters, all about decluttering our self-talk. And she talked about the work of Dr. Daniel Amen, and he has coined a phrase called automatic negative thoughts, which he says are cynical, gloomy, and complaining thoughts that just seem to keep coming all by themselves. So that could be like, I can never get on top of things. I'm a bad mom. Why did I forget that? I'm always forgetting such and such, or I never can do this. We kind of have these very polarizing views of ourselves. I always do this. I never do this and so forth. And what I like to do is to think about our thoughts, think about our thoughts (laughs) as being like cars passing by on the street and you're viewing them and you're seeing them, but you decide whether you want to get in the car and hitch a ride or not. Just remembering that we are not our thoughts and that we have a choice whether to believe our thoughts or not. And you always hear, oh, you know, would you talk to a friend that way? But sometimes I like to extend that further. If I'm saying I'm a bad mom or I'm a bad parent, would I say that to my husband? No. Would I say that to my best friend? No. So why are we not extending the same grace to ourselves that we would extend to a friend or a spouse? And Elizabeth Gilbert, who you may know from Eat, Pray, Love, that book's pretty famous in the movie, but she also wrote a book called Big Magic, which is all about creativity. And she talks about this coexistence of fear and creativity And I like to use this metaphor when it comes to truth and negative thoughts. So I'm going to kind of replace the word she's using here, but you'll kind of see what I mean. So when talking to these negative thoughts, we can say, dear negative thoughts, the truth and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. There's plenty of room in the vehicle for all of us. So make yourself at home, but understand this. The truth and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you're not allowed to have a vote. (laughs) I love that because it's not very practical for us to say, oh, I'm just going to push away every negative thought I ever have because we can't really control our thoughts, but we can control what role they play in our lives. 
And so we just want to make sure that the negative thoughts are not permitted to drive the car, so to speak. Okay, number three is to question your limiting and negative thoughts rather than taking them at face value. So once we've detached from these thoughts, we can then hold them up to the light and see what they truly are. And I love using these four questions from Byron Katie. They're called The Work, and you can find more information about this in the show notes. But I love this quote from her. It's not our thoughts, but the attachment to our thoughts that causes suffering. Attaching to a thought means believing that it's true without inquiring. So she uses these four questions, which she calls the work, and I'm just going to use I'm a bad mom because I yelled at my kids as a thought for the example. So the first question is, is it true? Is it true that I'm a bad mom because I yelled at my kids? No, I would say not. Number two, can you absolutely know that it's true? No, because it is a subjective thought whether or not I'm a bad mom. Number three, how do you react or what happens when you believe that thought? I feel horrible about myself. I just feel like I'm not the mom that my kids deserve. And number four, who would you be without the thought? I would have the freedom to know that I'm human, that I make mistakes, and that I could move on. So that's just an example of the work that you can use this self-inquiry. And then the fourth step is that once you've recognized these thoughts for what they are, you can replace the negative thoughts or limiting beliefs with truth statements. And we talked about this a little bit in episode 96 with Barb Raveling. And we talked specifically about truth journaling and being able to actually write down what the truth is. So if I had a thought, I am a bad mom because I yelled at my kids, what could I replace that with? I could say, I'm a mom who is doing the best she can. I'm easily triggered by my kids right now because I'm highly sensitive because of a lack of sleep and I'll do better tomorrow. Or it's all my fault. We can think instead, there's things I could have done differently and... I accept there's a lot outside of my control. And then one for the closet, because we're always feeling bad about our (laughs) weight and what we can't wear, right? What if we go into our closet and we think, I'll never fit into these pants again. We can replace that with, I am worthy of having clothing in my closet that fits me now and makes me feel good about myself. So something that's important to remember when we are replacing negative thoughts with truth statements is this idea of neuroplasticity which is that our brain is malleable and also we can create new neural pathways in our brain, which allows us to change our beliefs about ourselves and what is true. So to recap, when we are looking at mental clutter, which can be negative thoughts, shoulds, limiting beliefs, to-dos, these are my four recommended steps. Number one, find a way to capture and organize your to-dos so you can take action on them. Number two, learn how to detach judgment from your negative thoughts, shoulds, and limiting beliefs. Number three, question your limiting and negative thoughts by not accepting them at face value, but actually doing that the work or that self-inquiry. And number four, once you recognize the thoughts for what they are, replace them with truth statements. On Thursday, like I mentioned, we're going to have a very special 100th episode where I'm going to be taking you through the top 10 episodes ever on the podcast. So I know we're going to have a lot of fun and I will see you on Thursday. Bye for now.